Hello, everyone. Welcome to this session. Good to see you on the call. Just uh, let's just come back to the screens and go across and see who we've got on. Give, give us a wave, everyone. Hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. So good to see you. Um, so just to let you know, in the past couple of weeks uh, since our last call, actually, I've actually I've been quite ill um, with really what I feel was like a cold flu clearing. But uh, I did test positive for the you know what and feeling very much that, uh, well, it was just a lateral flow test, but feeling very much that they are just geared to pick up on colds and flu. And personally, I, fe I felt it was a very cathartic clearing um, from my chest and lung area that, that felt actually very benevolent and, um, and uh, a, a good healing and clearing for me. So, uh, the other big thing which I've been dealing with uh, over the past week is another round of personal attacks on me, which, to be quite honest, are getting quite uh, exhausting and draining. And these are attacks not coming from um, not coming from the mainstream. These are attacks from within the truth movement. And I just want to say this. Um, you know, for all of us who are awake to what's going on, for all of the people who are going to stand in the parks, who are trying to create alternative communities, we've got to stop turning on one another. We've got to stop this implosion and attacking one another and labeling people controlled opposition and shills. And I mean, it's just, it's just insanity. It's just insanity. If we can't even have solidarity and positivity and support and kindness to one another, then what hope have we got? Truly, what hope have we got? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm developing a kind of zero tolerance in my world. I hate that, that term, zero tolerance, but I just don't, I'm not prepared to be attacked. I'm not prepared to be abused. I just simply not. And so if anyone is going to come onto my groups and anything that I'm, uh, I'm part of and start feeling that they can be abusive and attacking, um, it's, just, it's, just a, it's just a no, I do not consent. And, um, you know, I see it all as part of this Wittico energy, this evil satanic energy that is working through people. So I just wanted to open up with that and um, <laughs> just to get, get that off my chest. Anyway, if you would like to come on today's call and to share what you're feeling, um, what's going on for you, your, your views on what's unfolding in the world, then the best way to do it is to use the reaction symbol and to put the yellow hand up. I can see some people have already got the yellow hand up because that actually gets you to the top of my screen. And um, yeah, so let us, um, let us come straight to you. Let me just come on to speak of you. And uh, I'm just going to open the call just with a little bell, so. And the first person I'm going to come to is Anne Elizabeth Arnake. So, Anne, good to see you on the call. I'm just going to ask you to unmute. Have done. Hey, Anne. Hello. Anne. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Uh, my first time speaking. I've been here as a bystander for a while. Um, I live in Kongsberg in Norway. Okay. Um, the place of the terrible tragedy a, a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, uh, lots of thoughts. Uh, there's a, a lot going on. And um, I think there is so much fear around and fear has awakened um, 
unbelievable behaviours in people that you probably wouldn't find there normally. Um, I found that the fear that is um, dividing everybody, the fear that is COVID, um, actually it was quite uh, amazing to see that fear uh, draining away when a, a real fear um, appeared in Kongsberg completely out of the blue when people were murdered. Um, and that, funny enough, that real fear has brought people together. Yes. <laughs> so almost the imagined fear of COVID has driven people or pushed people apart, but the real fear of that tragedy has brought them together again. It's a strange thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm very grateful for you having this group. It's fantastic. It gives, it gives another outlet um, because we haven't got outlets these days, not easily anyway. Um, and I, I fortunately joined a group locally in Norway, found them completely um, unexpectedly and was at a meeting a couple of weeks ago and we were oh, about 150 people, all different ages, stages, uh, types, nationalities. It was fantastic. And we had that common bond being there in a room together where we all thought the same, felt the same, were experiencing the same, and it was so useful. I mean, we don't have anything like your meetings in the park, but um, something like this is, is, uh, is really good. It really helps, really helpful. Uh, here in Norway, it's a strange one because although we are under the same rules and regs that everybody is all over the world, it's affecting us differently, strangely enough. People are very, I think we have such a good way of life here, a high standard, that actually not everybody or not many have felt it on their bodies, felt the impact of this. Um, and the Norwegians are very uh, believing of their government, totally believing of their government, which makes any anti-government movement very, very difficult. I've been to a couple of um, demos in outside the government's building in Oslo, and they have been so poorly attended and it's hardly been worth doing it. I mean, it has been worth it, but for the numbers, I was very disappointed mm. because people haven't really got up off their thumbs and said, yeah, we won't be a part of this. We don't want this. So it's, um, yeah. But uh, so it's great to find the little pockets every so often of people that are resisting. In my family, my daughter is on the same page as me and we live in the same house, which is fantastic. Um, but within family, very, very difficult. It's driven a big wedge between family members, you know, sort of snide comments and all that kind of behaviour, which is a, a, a mild form of bullying. But, yes. um, yeah. But anyway, <coughs> uh, we are doing our bit. Um, and I'm sharing stuff and posting stuff and I've been aware since the beginning, um, 2020, it was amazing to me that when you think the two people really don't have the same views, they always have opposite views or some views are different. Um, but when suddenly uh, governments were having the same views, opposition were having the same views, countries were having the same views, to me, it, it smelt straight away. And um, I've got a bit of a suspicious nature based on my upbringing. And uh, I've been aware from the beginning and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, we've got just got to fight this as best we can. So groups yeah. like yours are fantastic. Thank you very much. Thanks, Anne. Yes, Operation Lockstep. And I, I have to say that there is this big obsession of, of like it's to be effective. There's got to be numbers. Yeah. So, for example, with our Bakewell stand in the park, where probably yesterday there was um, probably about 15 to 20 people yeah and it's like oh there need to be more people and actually my feeling on it is that that there's there's tremendous power in small groups of people meeting all over the planet yeah and it doesn't have to be a million people to be effective small groups can actually be more powerful energetically yeah. than large groups and so that feeling of solidarity is really important and super important whilst I do love doing Zoom calls and speaking to people internationally, it's so important to have that non-digital, human, real life connection with real people in nature 
Absolutely. That to me is super powerful because this digital world that we're being sucked into a world where, I mean, all of the attacks on me, they're never in person. No one no. ever comes up to me in person at a stand in the park and has a go at me. It's no, always no. the keyboard warriors yeah. with the safety of the interface of the internet to, yeah. to vomit their bile towards yeah. me. Yeah. They haven't got the courage to come up to me in person and speak to my face and to say these things in real life. Mm. No. It's just it's extraordinary how yeah. this digital world provides that ability for people to be so rude, so heartless. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I was, um, I, my daughter had a birthday yesterday and we took her aunt with us um, as a treat and she was widowed in... June, her husband having been vaccinated in May. So I know, we, ha we have our suspicions, obviously. Yeah. Um, but she waited until I left the table to basically attack my daughter. Oh dear. She said, you're not vaccinated, are you? And my daughter can't be. And I can't be because it would, um, I have such underlying conditions, it would be fatal for me. Um, but she approached my daughter immediately and started and then by the time I came back it was over so this is the kind of thing that's going on yeah and people can use those moments for to create great great distancing in families and uh, yeah. it's such a shame terrible yeah. shame yeah but thank you for being there and for getting us joined together yeah thanks Anne thank, thank you for coming on and opening the call good to okay. see thank you there you yeah, bye then. Bye. Okay. Cool. Let's come next to Kareen Butchart. Just going to come across the screens. Oh, hold on. I've pressed the wrong button there. So we'll come to you next, Sharon Hobson. Uh, but I'll come to you first, Kareen. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi Kareen. Hello. Hi. So um, first of all, I'm going to be really brief. Um, but first of all, deep, deep gratitude to you and everybody just for all that you do. And I've been coming on the Zoom for a while. So um, thank you. First time speaking. And just um, a couple of things, really. Um, I got really ill with COVID on the 10th of December, uh, 10th of October. And I understand that there was some weird energetic thing going on around the South Pole. And I don't know, I felt really delicate and fragile that day. And then that night I had a bit of a sore throat, next day, absolutely flawed. And I'm still coming out of it. So this is four weeks now, and I'm just regaining my strength. My husband is in hospital for over two weeks. And, um, I suppose within it, because it's been really, really hard, I also feel it's like been a rite of passage and other people I know, and lots of people in Froome where I live got sick at the same time. Lots and lots of people, it's almost like this wave of illness or whatever hit everyone. And I kind of feel it's like a, a rite of passage. And what I feel now is I feel more deeply aligned to the light and other people I've spoken with, they say also they feel on some level there's been some awakening and um, that although it's been really, really tough and at times feeling like one oh, can't live anymore, it's all too difficult, it shifts. And maybe that's always something with illness, but I feel it's been a really important time. And the gifts, of course, are such love and support from people and um, we do feel very blessed so I don't know whether other people have had a you know some weird things starting on the 10th of October whether there were negative entities involved I don't know um, but anyway the other thing so that's a full stop on that one the other thing really is um, yesterday I managed to go to the stand in the park in Froome which was great big really big marathon for me to get there but I managed it and they were doing a lot of chemtrails yesterday they're doing a lot around Froome and a friend she came in and she said oh did you notice she said they've put a pentagram up there and this morning I also saw because I thought oh it looks a bit different from the normal crisscross and pre-dawn this morning they were spraying and again I thought 
oh, this is weird. This is slight. I couldn't see the whole thing, but the angles were different to normal. And I'm wondering, I don't know if anybody else has experienced that or seen it or has insight on that. I just, well, I'm so incensed by all the spraying and everything, but I just wondered if anybody had any thoughts on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, someone was mentioning that at the stand in the park yesterday, actually, overhead, because we're not on many flight paths here in no, Bakewell, but nonetheless, here. there was the sky was very definitely crisscrossed. Yeah. OK, Karim, well, thank you for coming on. Hope your thank husband you. gets better. Thank you. <laughs> Bless you. OK. Now, um, Sharon Hobson, if you want to come on, please, can you put your video on? Because I, uh, I'd like to come to people who've actually got a video uh, on, if possible. Um, so I'm going to come to Sadika next. I'm just going to come across the screens to people who've got their yellow hand up. So Sadika, would you like to speak? Hi, Rachel. Lovely to see you. Yeah. Hi. Uh... Hi. Um, so a few things. Um, notice of liability. Um, there is a uh, this is a, a notice that people can serve on people such as like teachers and councils and doctors um, to to say that, that they're going to be held personally responsible for anything that they do. Um, there's a very good um, video going around by Anna de Buissere, I think you pronounce yes. it. Um, yes. Uh, she was interviewed by Anna de Bries um, outside the House of Parliament, I think on the uh, 30th of October. It's, it's about 20, 25 minutes. It's really, really good. It's very worth seeing. And it's, I think it's one of those things that you could send around to a lot of people um, who are sort of doubting to say, look, you know, top lawyers are really <laughs> getting this. Doesn't that make you think, you know, just a, so yeah. I think, yeah, it's a good one to circulate. Um, there is um, a, a training that I, I've um, been going to some um, Zoom meetings about stopping 5G um, with a, quite a, a big group online. Um, and um, uh, Lena Poo, who's um, in the States, who's, who's also a lawyer, been, been working on notices of liability. She's offering some training, some free training. It starts tonight. Um, so if anyone is interested in, in learning how to set up um, notices of liability, um, then I, I put my email in the chat at the beginning of the, the call. Um, you can let me know and I can, you know, get, get you in touch if you want to start doing this. Yeah. I think it's a really powerful thing. And I just woke up this morning thinking, my God, you know, who are the, who are the connecting with the schools in Glastonbury and just like, you know, at least sending them the video or doing something just to say, look, you know, you will be held responsible for this. Mm. Um, so that's one thing. Um, uh, in Glastonbury, we, we've had our first uh, 5G master application since the precautionary principle was invoked about 18 months ago. Um, so it, I've put a link in the chat there. Anybody who would like to object to that master, it's very important that we kind of quash these things. Um, and also we want to fight it on the basis of the precautionary principle um, that the, the technology is, is untested, unsafe. Um, and the precautionary principle is saying that, you know, if you're not certain about the science and you can't prove the safety, then don't do it. And that's also enshrined in EU law, so which has been also adopted, brought in since Brexit. So that's another thing. Um, another thing is a little shout out to the, the shaman that I work with. I spoke about him before in the call about Peter Aziz. Um, he's, he's offering some uh, free training, as a, I think a meditation called Take Back Your Power. Um, mm. I think it's really, really helpful. It's azizshamanism.com. And uh, he's, uh, since our last call, I asked him if he would write a blog on sacred activism, which he has. So if you look on his, uh, his blog, He's written, he's written a blog on that and some support and guidance for people like us who are <laughs> out there doing our thing. Um, and I, I did wonder if, if, Rachel, you might be interested in doing an interview with him at some point. Um, I think I think you would could be a really, really good interview, the two of you, just a thought. Yeah, always up for doing interviews, yes. Yeah, great. And then finally, I've um, uh, been doing some work with um, uh, sound healing and... Um, mm. There's the uh, the golden mean ratio, which is very powerful. Um, it's it's taking the the root note and then taking the fifth and sli slightly sharpening it, and then the ratio of the two frequencies gives the golden mean. Mm -hmm. and, and I did it a few years ago in a workshop, um, 
and it just it just literally the hairs on the back of your neck kind of stand up and it's like the sun has come out it's an incredibly powerful mm. um, vibration when you get this I was thinking that you know if kind of choirs can do it if we can be standing on the land and toning this it could be yes. very powerful so I just wanted to kind of mention that as a, a possibility yeah thanks Sadiqa yeah. yeah so please put the links in the the chat for everyone yeah yeah so thanks for all you're doing us yeah and, <laughs> and just to say that we need to protect ourselves also from the from the attacks and things because it's yeah 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 thank you Th thanks Sadiqa yeah it is worth mentioning actually that um when um what happened with me with my illness is that I went to London to do an event and I had to do a test to do this to go and speak at this event it was like a sort of conference everyone had to do a test that attended and I was negative but one of the interesting things about going to London because obviously I live in the Peak District which is quite clear and clean is that, that I felt completely discombobulated in London and I put it down to just the levels of microwave radio wave 5g energy that I, I could literally that night I could feel almost like my like a deep pain in my bones and that was the starting uh, and then on I think it was night three I started to feel really feverish and when I got home then I did a test and I was positive so it was quite interesting because I it really felt like there was a that was very strong in the mix that 5g to activate whatever this thing was. That's just my, that was just my feeling on it. Okay, let's come next to JT. Let's get some men on the call. Hi, Jay. Good afternoon. Thanks very much for letting me on. It's not often I would get a, an opportunity. Um, Where are you calling from? Over in, in Northern Ireland, if, uh, okay. if you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> uh, again, thanks very much for everything you're doing. It's really good to, um, to have somebody that uh, has a, a public profile to uh, fight this. Um, we have our stand in the parks over here as well. I was at uh, our local one yesterday um, and we had about just over 20 people there, uh, not counting the dogs. <laughs> um, one thing that uh, I thought I might mention is just in relation to the jabs, um, I've only realized in the past couple of days that um, there's actually a third dose for clinically extremely vulnerable people. Um, and apparently it's aimed at um, the people like maybe that are on chemotherapy or end of life care, that kind of thing. But what I hadn't realized is that's distinct from the booster. And I'm not entirely sure what the distinction is. Um, so apologies if you've mentioned that before. I, um, as I said, don't often get a chance to get on. But uh, I just thought I would throw that out there. Okay, Jay. So you feel that there is <clears throat> there are specific jabs for specific groups of people? Um, I'm I'm not sure that it's um, anything more than uh, kind of like a further, uh, you know, and basically where, where people have had the first and, and second, I think it's just like another one of those. Yeah. Um, from what I had read, I can probably find the link and post it. Um, it seems as if this is for people who maybe haven't acquired enough immunity as far as they're concerned from the first couple. Um, and they may still need a booster <laughs> subsequently. Um, I think is what's said. Um, but uh, for me, it raises a whole pile of questions in terms of, you know, if, at what point are you considered safe to travel or uh, are you considered vaccinated? Um, if, uh, if there's all these different options available depending on your medical history and so on. Yeah. Well, I, I just think we know, don't we, that the whole thing is just a shambolic scam, basically. It, I mean, these jabs don't seem to offer anyone any protection. I, no. I saw a story this morning that all of the, I think it was in the Netherlands, all of the people in the ICU with COVID, all of them were vaccinated. You know, it's mm -hmm. so the idea that these these jabs are helping people. And it was quite interesting because someone, a, a friend of mine a dj'd friend of mine said 
oh, you should have had the jab. You should have had the jab. See, you should have had the jab. And I'm like, I would actually much prefer to have, have had this cold flu, this intense cold flu, and to now have natural immunity than mm -hmm. to have had a toxic jab. Um, well, absolutely. And I mean, there was that. Health. That yeah. There was that article that um, I'm sure everybody's seen saying natural immunity is uh, was it 27 times better than um, something that comes out of a, a vaccine. Well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it is, yeah. At least for this disease, anyway. Yeah, it's not something that anyone can. Well, I don't believe anyone should be trusting at all. Anyway, thank you, JT. Thanks Welcome. for coming on. Thanks. Okay. Who should we come to next? Let's come to Michael in LA or in California, regular Michael Mankinder. Hello again. Thank you. Hiya. Uh, Sadiq or Sadika, uh, what wonderful information. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to introduce you all to a fellow in West Middlesex, um, uh, Nathaniel Wills. And his story came to me by way of Freedom Cells, the telegram group for uh, Freedom Cells, and that's Freedom, C-E-L-L-S, although Freedom Cells, you know, is a whole other <laughs> angle. But, uh, and, and I was so struck by his story. Uh, he recorded himself interacting with NHS uh, in, in relation to uh, his wife and, and baby and it's a long conversation that's it's quite quite evocative. Uh, he, the baby's having some health challenges today, so he's not able to be on your call today. But uh, I'll I'll send you uh, some links, Rachel, by by email, and and anyone who wants to get in touch with me, uh, I can connect you all in the meantime through Telegram. Uh, wonderful, wonderful, just patient and erudite gentleman dealing with with this this madness and 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 the the narrative as we say um my mankinder movement has been it, each of these little attacks is is galvanizing us as we as we find each other more and and thank you for all you do um the uh, uh what what you'd said earlier about about our, our fellow truthers uh, being our, our our greatest challenge. Uh, what I've been through uh, over this year is is just it's it, I don't know it's material for a book or a movie. Um, and I've been hesitant to talk about this particular issue, but I, I don't think it'll come to the attention of the, of the person uh, in in question. Um, a, a a a super truther, really brilliant insight and uh, wanted to help uh, the movements and connect with the best leaders in Southern California. So I, I came to this person's home. We began uh, collaboration. I moved my entire uh, office, uh, my, my computers and, and everything in, and, and we began to build a production company. Within five days, the, the dynamic had turned so toxic <clears throat> that I realized we were dealing with um, really advanced uh, narcissism. And I've, I've been locked away from my computers, all my data, my passport, uh, my title to my vehicle. Um, it's been madness. And, and so I'm, I've been coordinating with all the other leaders in, in the area and, and strategizing a, a way to, um, without, without ever uh, attacking or bringing any negative energy to this person because they really deserve help. Um, to, uh, you know, re reclaim my property and enable me to, to get back on track because without my data, without my computers, it's, it's been very difficult. So I've been floating in neighborhoods uh, that I'm not even familiar with. Uh, so the, where, where this takes us to is that, as you refer to it as Watiko or, or narcissism, that really rules our world. And, and it's fascinating how it can in fact, or, get, or become habitual or patterned in, into people that, that have been abused. And then they're defending and reaching out, as you say, you know, calling other people shills and, and uh, attacking them. And we're, we're the allies. We're trying to help yeah. each other and going, what, what are you doing? 
Yeah. And this has been this has been a pattern that I've I've been dealing with really this uh, this entire year and and more. Yeah. <clears throat> Interesting, Michael. Thank you for coming on and good to see you. Always. Okay. Um, I'm just going to mute you back there, Michael, and uh, I'm going to come next to Jade Taylor. But before I do that, I'm just going to come across the screens. We've got 94 people on at the moment. Let's just see who we've got on the screens. If you do want to speak, the way to do it is to put the yellow hand up in the reactions buttons and then I'll know to come to you. So good to see you on the call. Hi to Sass there and Deanne. Uh, and yeah, if you've got your video on, you do come to the top of the screens just to say, and I'm still waiting for Sharon to put her video on, in which case I'll come to you. Um, but let's come next to Jade Taylor. So hi to Jade. Hello. Hi, Rachel. Hello, everyone. Hi. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I've um, uh, wanted to like speak out because I know we're talking about COVID. Um, I'm a survivor <clears throat> of uh, military mind control and satanic abuse. Wow. Uh, and I kind of knew when this all kicked off what this was all about. Uh, my dad was a programmer, so there was always computers. So I was kind of computers and electricity, all different things were used to program my mind. Um, during the holidays, uh, me and my brother were drugged and we'd wake up in on an airbase. Mm. And I had uh, children in cages. Um, so they would kind of, we'd have electrified collars um, and then I'd be taken up into a lab, I mean, this is in the 80s, and I know that doctor had a German accent, um, and they would be uh, aspirating and doing things with a brainstem. So in hindsight, I'm thinking that was probably adrenochrome. Um, and my dad used to provide children. So it's just kind of, um, you know, when we kind of look at the bigger picture of Bill Gates and the connections with Epstein Island, um, it's realizing on the trafficking side, how much this is a part of it um, and children, but the computing we have today for me without doubt is based on a lot of what I went through and other children went through to crack the mind. Yeah. Um, so uh, I'm speaking out now because Halloween is very difficult, um, but just to make people aware of like Armistice Day. Mm is the 11th of the 11th and there's a two minute si silence 11 a.m so you get yes. how they play with the numbers um i was uh my dad was taught by military people so i was put through an alice in wonderland program so disney is very much a part of um and i mean i lived in swindon and my dad was a school teacher so i went to school and this happened at the holidays or you know um so it's just kind of saying it's amongst us it's not somewhere it's not underground it's you know it's it's here and um, when I was I was lucky when I was 16 to um, find an incest survivors group and there were 21 of us three of us been through what I've been through so you get mm. an idea of the not you know how widespread this is um, but armistice day for uh, survivors because I was out in the world operating so they needed hypnosis um, so they'd use money and LSD um, and torture, so as though the Queen was talking on the banknotes. So every time, of course, I used money, it would rehypnotize me, mm. which luckily I got free therapy, use counselling. Otherwise, if I'd have handed over money, it would have just kind of um, triggered me back in. Um, and also, um, Armistice Day is the silence. So for survivors like myself, when people do a two minute silence, of course, our brain thinks that everybody's in the cult. <laughs> mm. So it's just to give you a kind of uh, uh, like, and, and I think it was what the lady was saying from Froome, because I used to live in Froome. Um, it's so much easier to recover. Um, before, I'd have to deal with it on my own in therapy. But since all of this COVID is, um, I just feel like it is the dark is, the dark is just being seen. I don't think it's any worse than it was. Mm. But like, 
somebody like me going to the marches and meeting people and touching different groups it's like we I think we're coming together spiritually and we were so fragmented and disjointed um and I think that is really cleaning things up if that makes sense mm. it's like I'm dealing with a lot of memories and flashbacks because it's coming up to armistice so this is always hard for me but somehow I now have the ability and the courage and the confidence and I feel almost um god held um that I can almost kind of see things and it's like they're leaving me like film reels and I'll get the pains but there's there really is like I feel held by God right now and I've Ooh. never had that before and there's almost this whispering and this holding and the pain like I know I just know and it'll say oh that's because of that but you're here right now and the ability to let it go like I've never been able to before so in terms of the natural healing that's happening it's just nice to be a testament of I think all of this is clearing up there's you know it's it's yes. evaporating. it's like steam on a road it's definitely getting better yeah definitely getting better wow jade i mean that that's that's a lot for you to have held personally and lived through so thank you for coming on and sharing that on the call oh pleasure yeah yeah my my sense is that there are so many so many groups now coming together and bringing through huge amounts of light through shamanic work and ceremonial work and it's almost like creating portals of light so that, that what's happening is the whole of the 3D plane where the Watiko is hiding in these dark shadows yeah, and the labyrinth. Yeah. Well, is the that, light is flooding yeah, through so yeah. that we're, uh, we're seeing yeah. it. Exactly. And my dad, I said my dad was possessed without a doubt. I can't look at his face, tell his face. Um, but I know that the trauma was constantly induced so that I was outside of my body. So it's like a vehicle. With this association, I was outside my body so he could get to my spirit. Yes. Whereas love, anything I loved is inside. It's almost, they can't get in. Yeah. So like when I was younger, I would just, the smallest things I could love, I knew that was my protection. Yeah. Because my dad had to cause pain to disassociate me out so they could siphon the spirit. Yeah, yeah. But like love holds you in and they can't, they can't get you. Yeah, yeah. They can't get you. Yeah, I mean, the, the Watiko feet, it has to feed off pain suffering yeah. misery yeah. yes and they yeah. know that yeah and on a military level for what I went through they know exactly where to break your bone what to do and it's all hidden they know exactly how to induce the maximum pain wow. to hold somebody in it's surgical surgical on the trafficking side so yeah they know wow. that they know this gosh jade so much coming into the light thank you so yeah. much for coming on yeah, and yeah, sharing yeah. oh pleasure yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm i'm sure i chose my life for this moment so <laughs> yeah yeah i'm good <laughs> okay lots of love to you oh thank you i'm just going to mute you back there and we'll come to um we'll come to sue ainsco and then to sammy i'm still waiting for sharon to put her video on um so let's just come to sue hi hi hello okay hi hi rachel oh that was so moving so moving um yeah i can really feel and um that must have been taken quite a lot of courage i would imagine for jay to share that as well that's you know that experience uh, and it brings it very, very real. I think we, uh, most of us on this call probably are aware of things that are going on with um, child trafficking. And, and I agree with Jade that it's all, you know, it's all very, very um, connected. Um, and as, as everybody is saying, Rachel, yes, a huge thank you um, for everything that you're doing. Um, it's really lovely to have this connection of this group. I was, I put my hand up because I did want to share. Um, yesterday, I was at an, uh, an Uprise and Shine event that had been um, cancelled at Oldham at the last minute. And it ended up at my uh, pub locally. 
uh, that's been a great space as um, a truth as connection. And I only found out about that. I didn't realize it was in my village, Rachel, other than coming on your calls when I put a little notice on saying, is, is there anybody in the area wanting to um, expand the, you know, my groups that I was in? Um, so that was that was a, a really lovely event. I was able to go all yesterday afternoon and listen to three really good speakers. I have put a connection on the line because you can go. What I found this morning was that you can actually with that connection that I put on, you can go on. And I'm not sure whether they were at Rotherham or I'm not I'm not exactly sure where the last festival was. But actually, you can go online and listen to all of the talks. And I thought mm. that they were immensely uplifting, a lot of them, and empowering um, and giving solutions. Um, and then uh, there was this. So I've not seen this one before, uh, Brighter Times. So this is a magazine that is out. I don't know if you know about it, Rachel. I haven't seen that one, though. Yeah, so and I did say that I would let you know about it actually because uh, the uh, Karen on the door was saying, oh, you know, she wanted to connect with you. Um, and then, you know, the, I picked up ones. This is the Freedom Network. So um, the Guardians 300 were there as well. So I think there is, I think the momentum is growing. I think the stand in the park, I think the rebels on the roundabouts, I think the fact that the schools are being served as well, that people are handing um, these, you know, these forms out, that it is all steadily having an effect yeah. is my, in my humble opinion. Yeah, um, I agree, Sue. Yeah, and I, I agree with what you're saying, Rachel, that it doesn't have to be you know, some massive event somewhere, although there is, there is one um, in, Totness uh, with Dolores Carhill. There are some okay. quite big speakers there. I think it's on the 20th of this month. I mean, what I can do is I'll, I'll nip upstairs and go and get the leaflet and put that on the line, which looks a very good uh, conference to go to um, with a demonstration. And also you can watch that online. Yeah. which is the beauty of it that you don't actually have to get on a coach and go so really I was just wanting to kind of share what I felt was you know quite positive and had really uplifted me yesterday and yeah. literally a five minute walk in my village so um, yeah. I mean sadly we are lose we're probably losing um, the pub um, but anyway you, we'll find somewhere else um, yeah. a hub a hub a nice happy hub yeah Thanks, Sue. Yes, I mean, I to me, it's it's. I mean, all all shades of uh, of the truth and movement are welcome. So you know, I'm not yeah. I'm not saying it's not powerful to have like a million people go to London, but let's not forget that little small groups have tremendous power too. That's what I'm trying to say. Well, okay. I think well in the Guardians, it was funny because they used that analogy that with with the French resistance, you know, in the World War, they had to keep in small groups. It yeah. was far better to stay in small groups. Yeah, yeah, undercover. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Okay, thanks for coming on, Sue. Yeah, Lots you're welcome. Love. You're welcome. I'm going to come now to Sharon, who's got her video on finally. Hi, Sharon. Then we'll come to Sammy. And then Juliet and Sass, and if we get time, Karen, to try and get through as many people as we can. Hiya. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everyone. Hi, Sharon. Hi. Hi. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I haven't been on before, but I've been following you from the beginning. Um, I've been awakened to all this right from the beginning. Uh, I've not been vaccinated, and neither has my husband. Um, I have underlying conditions that stop me from being vaccinated, but I'd be more vac more scared about the vaccine than I would about COVID. I just want to say, though, to everyone, um, I've got COVID now. I've had it for five weeks. I've never been so ill in all my life. I've never had anything like this before. It's not just flu. May I just say to everyone, this is not just flu. Um, I'm still struggling. I haven't been in hospital. Um, me and my husband have managed to stay out of hospital. We've been helping each other. 
Um, he was, his oxygen levels were very low. I've had to nurse him um, and he's still very bad. Um, now, what I want to know is, are we as unvaccinated people in danger from mixing with vaccinated people? Uh, me and my husband have been quite isolated. Um, we're quite fit and healthy, but we haven't really mixed. Um, and at the beginning of October, we actually met up with some friends who were vaccinated, who we haven't seen since the beginning of the pandemic. Um, two days later, I fell ill. Um, they didn't have COVID. They, were, they looked okay. They said they'd been tested and they were fine. So we don't know where it's come from, but um, we were wondering, are we in danger from mixing with vaccinated people as unvaccinated now? I had a test, for the PCR test came back negative, even though I was really, really poorly. Um, so I paid privately to have an antibody test and it came back, uh, that came back positive. So I do have some antibodies now against COVID, even though the PCR test, which I had done, came back negative. And I didn't believe it when it came back negative because I knew there was something. I've never been so ill in my life, Rachel, ever. Um, there definitely is something very vile and nasty out there. And um, I don't know what it is. I think myself, it's been manufactured. I think it's been made by some evil bastards, forget my French, and in Wuhan or whatever, and it's got out and it actually is making people ill. Now, is it that, or are we catching something from the vaccine? And I can't find any answers. Sharon, can I just ask you a question? Did, did or does what you have feel like an entity attachment? You know, that's in, an interesting question, Rachel. Um, I felt like I was so angry inside and I felt like there were demons wanting to get out. I yes. was so angry at the beginning of the illness. Um, yeah, that's weird. Yeah, yeah, I do. The reason I mention that is because... Yeah. Um, when I had it, I, I went into a very kind of dark place of just, think, of just thinking about death a lot yeah. and feeling absolutely drained, like something was completely sucking all of my energy away. Uh -huh. yeah. And I happened to be reading a book, which is a pro completely unrelated program. And there was a quote saying, um, ask and it shall be given by Jesus. Mm -hmm. And this just, it wasn't a religious book. But I just, when I saw that, I just thought, oh, let me pray to Jesus to like, you know, I'm just, and I just sent out yeah. a prayer. I didn't, it wasn't like I kind of did any formal ceremony, Yeah. but I just said, oh, P Jesus, please make me better again. You know, I, I really don't like being, I'm oh. never ill. So I, was very, oh. I really just don't do illness. And oh. next day, literally it was like this thing had cleared. It had left me. And then some other people on another group that I'm in sent me um, uh, a link to Delling Pod's interview of Jerry Marzinski. And he was talking about schizophrenia and how schizophrenia is not some chemical brain in imbalance, but in his view, it was an entity energy attachment. Right. And so right. when I, I, I was watching that and I was thinking it did actually feel like that, having done a yeah. lot of shamanic work, it did feel that something had latched into my energy yeah. field yeah. and that this prayer had somehow cleared it. And it was like next day, all of the color was back in my life. When I looked at outside, it was kind of like something like a fog had lifted. Something had lifted. Yeah. So I do oh, wonder whether oh. there is because because this is. There is a lot of Wittico at play at the moment. And that's what jo John Lamb Nash has been saying is that yeah. the, the way to understand this is to realize this is not human. What we are dealing with here is not human. And when you yeah. realize that everything makes sense, that we're dealing with lower, lower density vibrational entities that are it's looking evil. to latch in. Yeah, it's yeah. evil. I feel that and I am so drained and I can't shake it off, Rachel. I'm okay, so here, now. 
here's the thing then, Sharon, and also Jerry Marzinski. I, I almost read it today and I thought, no, because I, I get attacked if I do anything Christian <coughs> or religious. But yeah. try reciting the Lord's Prayer. He said that he found that very, um, no, sorry, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd. Okay. In particular, or I suppose I'll you could try do anything. the Lord's you could oh, yeah. do the Lord's Prayer, but he said that in his schizophrenic patients, if they recited the, the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, over and over, that drove these schizophrenic entities crazy. And it was, mm -hmm. it was, it was kind of like an exorcism. So try, try that it. and I report will. back and yeah. see what you feel. I'll try anything. I'm so desperate, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Try that and, and, and let us know yeah. how it goes, Sharon. And I'm uh, wishing you. you so much love and Thank healing you. and clearing of uh, Thank you, everyone. And to your husband as well. Thank okay. you very Lots much. Lots of love. Okay, let's come to Sammy next. We've got 10 minutes left. Try and get as many people on as we can. Hi, Sammy. Hi. Hello, Rachel. Hello, everybody. Um, it's really great to be um, able to come and speak on here again. Um, what an inspiring conversation this has already been. Um, Jade, wow, I'm really honouring you for your bravery and your courage for what you shared today. I've, I think that's been so healing for so many of us and you know, just really honouring you for having the courage to really share that because as this comes out of the shadows and into the light, it's, um, wow, I, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still kind of um, really processing what you shared there. So forgive me if I'm a little shaky in, in what I want to express, which also kind of ties in a little bit with what Michael has shared of his experience and, and what you're sharing, Rachel, about the sort of attacks that you are receiving from, um, you know, energies within this awake movement. And, um, it's kind of this Wutiko energy, it, it often displays itself very overtly, but quite often it comes in the shade of something incredibly beautiful and light. Yes. Uh, actually on the same, you know, as angelic almost. Um, I am um, really fascinated through my own experiences of narcissistic abuse in, an, in, in, in a dynamic which was a relationship, but also within a group spiritual setting. Um, I'm, this is kind of, I feel like my life's work and everything that I've experienced has almost prepared me for, for this moment in, in history within my own life as to how I can respond to it, which is ultimately to withdraw my energy from it. I, I know it's always feeding off our fears and our, and our, um, our traumas essentially and so I'll try and keep this really brief but essentially it's just to kind of remind myself especially that just you know it, it's always comes back to me and I always have to take responsibility for my own response to things and to really trust my own judgment um I was watching a film recently called Midsummer. I don't know if any of you have, have seen this film it's on Netflix and it's about a cult a seemingly very beautiful cult but at the core of this film there is a young woman who is extremely lonely she's just lost all of her family and um is extremely in a state of grief and, and 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 extreme sadness so when you're in that state you are in a prime position for for people to be manipulated and brainwashed this whole film is about brainwashing yeah it's, it's kind of relevant to what's happening now that so many of us are feeling lonely and isolated and disconnected from our families and that can make us in some way susceptible to manipulation so that manipulation can we can see it in the movement in in the kind of with eco energy that's within the system, but it can also infiltrate within this awake movement. And so it's just for us to always really be in our sovereign power and, and to recognize that it can, I don't, I want this to be an inspiring, um, an, an inspiring message, not one of fear. Like we mustn't ever, you know, we try and try to sort of transmute whatever fears are going on for us. But I have really noticed more recently in this awake movement, a lot of narcissism and a lot of people feeling attached to that, wanting to be the hero and the savior and, um, you know, wanting to lead people into the light. But quite often it can, it, it can not always, not always as it seems. So it's that thing of just really transmuting whatever is always going on for us and bringing it back to our own truth of any situation and not handing our power away to anyone else really to be our saviors yeah heroes we have to we have to be our own saviors and our own our own source of security and safety with whatever is happening i don't know if i'm articulating this very well but yeah you I are to say that and just to michael i really feel your i really feel like what you've been I've, i have experienced this quite a lot and i know i'm the common denominator in that so there's something in me which is resonating with that but always just to yeah i just wanted to share that thank you yeah. 
Thank you, Sammy. Yeah, no, the, to, my experience is this Watiko energy is looking for cracks at yeah. in anyone at any time. Mm. So you can catch, I mean, I've caught like Watiko thoughts and like, whoa, yeah. where did that come from? And caught it and recognized it. Mm. And so it, it, it's, it's not just them, the bad guys out there. It's, yeah. it's, we have to be really, really wary of what's going on the whole time, but really consciously aware. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thanks for coming on. Let's come to Juliet Madden and then we'll come to Sass. See how many people we can get on. Hey, Juliet. Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Great. Well, it's very good to see you, Rachel and um, Jade. You are an absolute heroine being able to say that. I'm a primary school teacher. Um, I, we've opened our farm up to children to have a childhood and it's been the children all the way along that um, has sort of hit my bottom, <laughs> my bottom, if you like. Um, but that's not really why I'm talking today. I, I just wanted to, to let you know that yesterday we gathered our group. Um, we've got about 70 now and we've been gathering in a house um, in North Yorkshire. And we discovered that within walking distance, or oh, Juliet you're freezing a bit 3500 years BC and um, I'm just trying to show you the picture because it's absolutely incredible it's the same geometry as the three pyramids in Egypt and it is walking distance can you see I don't know if you can see this it's so bad but it's three concentric circles let me see if I can is that um, no it's not really working there's a wood at the bottom which is a wooded henge and then two circles above. Can anyone yes. see that? Yes. And one of the circles, the middle circle, is off beam. Now, um, it's aligned with Orion. Uh, the northern um, henge, it, it is, it, you get the moon, uh, uh, it's the winter solstice, I think. And we're in the northern henge, which is in that wood. And uh, we had an amazing guy to talk to us about it. Um, and the top circle represents the earth and it's all sort of going into decay, which is rather significant. The middle circle is us and our um, spiritual being and our uh, connected to source. And the third circle is um, the creation, the creator God. Um, it's the actual God himself. And the geometry is precisely the same as the three pyramids of Egypt. They think mm. there's this, these henges, one in every continent. This happens to be half an hour walk from where we've decided to keep meeting. Uh, it's absolutely extraordinary. We did the most incredible energy um, healing. And I've been a lifelong believer in Jesus. And, and I've been very lucky. I've grown up. It's so often our Christianity can be a barrier to the bigger picture, but I also think it has the key. It's so often in life, you get both in one. So using that Psalm 23 is so powerful and, and using Jesus is so powerful, but it's not, it, it's a church without, we don't want to talk about churches with their high walls. We want this everywhere, you know, and to go into a henge, which goes back thousands of years way before Jesus, time yes. is irrelevant. It is absolutely irrelevant. And at this time, this henge, it's now covered by the trees and hidden away. Um, the trees seem to be speaking to us. And so I think everything you do, Rachel, with nature, animals, we have um, this, awa this true awakening in our own hearts. We can only just recognize. I mean, listening to Jade has given me such hope for all these children that is what is their final goal is they want rid of the innocence, the God-given printed images on life. And, and, and it's, we have so much coming out, literally, of the woodwork. We have this henge. There's only one in every continent, literally half an hour away. So I think we are really being, we're, we're really being blessed wherever we are in these dark times. And there really is. The light is going to be beyond anything we can imagine. And I just want people to feel uplifted i mean i've got a son that's been double jabbed i've mourned it 
but we we just got to be bigger than this and know yeah. that there is a bigger picture and there's always hope and the one thing they're not going to take away from us is hope yes. and that's what keeps people going even in the darkest time even in those death camps it was hope thinking just live for another day yeah. just live for another day there's a better coming and I think we've got to really We've been told there's a second coming. I don't know if that's true or not, but I do believe there's going to be a fantastic end to this. And we just got to bear with one another in love, whether they're jabbed, yes. unjabbed. You know, we don't want to be divided. But I just thought it was quite a thing to share because one final thing about it is that wall around those three that looks a bit like a, is gypsum. And chip that was built with gypsum. And gypsum is a sign of new beginnings. And it's also a sign of purification yeah and um i just you know we're we're not alone we've got people that have gone thousands of years before us and thousands of years ahead of us we've got the stars we've got everything trying to root for us and our mother earth and we've just got to stay grounded stay rooted and i think anything's possible we've got them faith of a mustard seed that mountain can climb to the <laughs> sea and it really will i've really got to we've really got to hang on to that so just okay. thank you all and well done jade very brave yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Juliet. Thank you for that message of hope. I'm going to keep going and come to SAS, even though we've run over the hour, but it feels important to keep going. SAS, what do you think? Hi, hi, Rachel. Sorry you've been poorly, darling. In fact, every, really, for everybody, I'm very sorry that you feel ill, that you've been ill. There's a, you know, obviously we've been attacked at large. I've got a feeling that the, both the injectables and the energies that have been given off either in the um, chemtrails is actually off planet technology. So that's why people keep saying I've never had anything like this before because it yeah. wasn't wasn't born from this from this planet. So and it, it's, it's a way of altering our, you know, our, our perceptions, how we view things being cut off from our source. But we, we're all if you have a higher vibration or you work on your vibration, we can over, we can all overcome this. And even just doing individually in our own homes, um, which I'll, I shall just briefly just do a little demonstration of it. But I'm just interested to say I was in the stand in the park yesterday and I was chatting to this pilot who had been sacked from his job as a captain with a certain airline because he wouldn't be jabbed. But mm. because they all, a lot of the airlines are, directors have got together and realized that so many of the pilots are dropping and the staff that they're really worried especially British Airways was very concerned that a plane may go down with passengers if you know a captain or somebody you know flying the plane wasn't well so they're so concerned about this they found out they're actually not insured if if a plane goes down if a wow. has a job he's not insured so apparently I don't know whether he's still the CEO. I think he might have retired now, but um, the CEO of uh, British Airways actually called a meeting or had to be called to a meeting with Boris Johnson, which he went to last week. And they've had big discussions about what's going, you know, we can't carry on like this because we're going to have to pull the airline because we can't, you know, possibly, you know, <laughs> carry on without any underwriting, any under insurance to cover yes. it. Yes, wow. So Boris Johnson, apparently, for the first time, he's actually underwritten the airline. He's allowed them to be underwritten by insurance against anything that happens due to COVID jabs. So that's really interesting. I thought, wow, that's fantastic. That's really interesting. And he said there's he out of all the pilots he knows, there's only six that haven't been jabbed out of all the airlines across the across the world that he knows of. Mm. So that's a massive massive thing that's going on is that the so how long can they continue before the whole thing collapses because it's not just going to be airlines is it it could be cruise ships it could be yeah. you know people driving coaches or trains so i think it's just going to collapse in on itself because it's just not going to be it's not going to be sustainable so that it was really really interesting but yes all this illness I, i've noticed how a lot of very deep sadness is coming up um for for me um, sadness about how um, just especially around this last few weeks, because obviously it's a huge, big, uh, a huge, big energy time for for the vampires, for the for the dark forces. Yes. Um, 
and I, you know I felt myself quite drained of energy when as normally I feel very energetic and full of life but I've just noticed all the stuff coming up and I've noticed all stuff coming out of my skin as well so it's as if we're all processing well I am especially processing but I'm sure other people are as well very deep held emotions about our real knowing on a deeper level that this planet was taken over a long long time ago but I felt so helpless to do anything about it mm -hmm. what I do to lift my um, raise my vibrations when I'm feeling down especially for people who live on their own and you haven't got anyone to banter with or anyone to sort of kick off with I've got my little dog and my and my cat but you do feel quite I do feel quite isolated at times because even though you've got lots of friends there's nobody really that you can just constantly be in touch with so these groups and gathering together and these calls here but what I've noticed what I do I literally just connect with my body and place my hand on my chest and one on my on my belly and I literally just hum I just hum for as long as I feel mm. so, and I'm just wondering if everyone, anybody would like to join in with just to hum now, just to see how it feels, the difference, how you feel now. So just place a hand on your, on your chest. And what this humming does is it releases nitric oxide, which it calms everything down and releases all your vessels, veins, your cardiovascular system, your heart starts to relax. So if anybody's feeling anxious or nervous, so just try this with me. And it's just... See if you can feel the hum on your lips. So that's the idea, is just to find a buzz on the lips and just close the eyes and go within. And I'll start off and just join in with me. It might sound a, a bit crazy, but it's just something that I feel may help some people and those that may be listening to this later on as well. So just go into the stillness and the silence. Mm. And then after you've hung, just bathe in that energy, which I just feel as the golden silence. And just notice if anything changes. I just feel there's something really powerful in silence when we're in a group. The silence is the golden bit in between the sound. So I just hope that that may help to feel more connected, more grounded. Mm. There's a general hum that goes on in the universe in the background. There's just this beautiful hum. And it's the sort of heartbeat. It's the essence of what we are. So if anybody feels sometimes alone or feeling down, or even if you're feeling ill, just see if you can connect to your hum. Yeah. Thank that's you, sir. That's all I wanted to say today. And lots of love. And thank you for all you brave souls that have shared your, yeah. you know, your soul. It takes a lot of courage. So thank you. Thanks, Sus. Thank you for ending the call with that, um, that humming meditation. And yeah, super powerful sound healing, that resonance of, perfect harmonic resonance super healing and clearing okay so um yeah thank you all for joining and for staying on a bit longer today great to see you all just coming across the screens just to see who's still on let's come back to all the videos and yeah sending you all so much love so much gratitude just to say, if you are coming to the Bakewell stand in the park next Sunday, which is the 14th, I believe, 14th of November, just to say we're, we're not at Bath Gardens where the Cenotaph is because it's Remembrance Sunday. We're going to be in the main recreation ground near the tennis courts, near the river, in the main Bakewell Park, just for one week only. So hopefully uh, it would be nice to see you if you can come along to Bakewell and uh, join us. 
So sending you all so much love. Have a great day. Bye for now.